guys, I'm Ryan Houston and welcome to my Fly Tying channel. This channel contains hundreds of different videos covering all manner of different patterns, techniques uh, and styles of fly tying. There's something here to suit almost everybody so hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, let's get on with the show. Hi guys, so I'm going to tie another uh, streamer pattern. It's another fly by John Barr and this one is called the Meat Whistle. So this is tied on uh, one of these uh, horizontal jig uh, hooks or horizontal light jig hooks. And it's a heavy pattern sort of, I guess it imitates lots of bait fish. So uh, for this I'm actually using, uh, this one's a VMC uh, jig hook, although uh, Mustad and a variety of other different companies make these uh, 90 degree jigs. And I'm going to use a fully metal uh, slotted uh, cone head. This is a tungsten in a 4 mil or 5.32, seconds. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is slide that on. So you put the, uh, slide the hook into the cone eye, the front of the cone. And the fact that this is a slotted jig means that it will slide past your uh, Slide past your barb without doing any damage, without the need to knock that down. So I'm going to put that on. And what I'm going to do now is uh, to add the zonker strip. So the zonker strip in this, I'm going to tie an olive version of this. Uh, and I'm going to use olive rabbit. So I'm going to take this probably a shank length or so. And then I want to put the hook point right into the center of the strip and pass that through. Take the hook out and then replace it back into our vise. If you want, you can just put a bit of spit on that and that should keep everything back out of your way. Okay, I'm going to use two different tie-in threads for this fly. So for the main of the tying what I'm going to use is this Textream Standard 6.0 in black. And I'm going to add that on. And take it down the shank. So uh, I'm going to put a rib in this, although it's not 100% necessary with this style of tying. You could just uh, tie your fly in and pull the, the zonker strip up tight at the front and it will pull it back against the back of your, your body and hold it there. But I'm going to use a plain, simple silver wire rib. Just going to add that on. Then I'm going to use a gold sparkle braid as the body. So I'll tie that on. Wrap back. And then take the thread again forward. So, what I'm going to do here, for a couple of different reasons. One for durability. And another is to stop the uh, strip pulling the, the body forward. Is I'm just going to coat that tying with super glue, zap a gap, whatever you want to call it. And while it's wet, I'm then going to wrap the sparkle braid on. Now you notice I'm not tying this up tight here. Secure that by other means in a minute. So we'll tie that off, trim it, and then what we're going to do is I'm going to take a wrap of my thread, or not my thread, my wire, and then I'm going to pull this zonker strip tight here, and then I'm going to find. Where I'm going to tie that in. 
hold it in place and get a wrap of thread across that just to hold it. A second one and then pull the strip out of the road. While this is under tension if I get a couple of turns in front of it it'll mean then that the turns that I have to hold it in place shouldn't release. Shouldn't. Then bind down over those cut ends. And wrap backwards a little bit. So you can see I've turned the fly upside down because I find it easier to wrap into the bend or cup of a hook, whatever way you want to call it. So I'm now just going to take my wire up in that gap and then wet those fibers and that'll allow you to sort of separate out and we're just going to run the, the rib up through our fur until we get to the front and then what I'm going to do is put two or three wraps and snap that off so our cone can still move essentially so now uh, we can add a little bit of flash and a little bit of movement in here so what I'm going to do is take uh, I'm going to add a little bit of mirage crinkle in here so I'm just going to put on single length of it and take it back till it's matching length with the back of the rabbit strip and fold that over to the other side what's left of it and the same tie that in so it's flat on that side take it to the back of the rabbit strip and cut it off and then I'm going to add in some olive silly legs or rubber legs whatever you want to call them so we take, uh, because of the lengthways here, we're probably going to take two of these. And again, I'm just going to measure them back to the back of the rabbit strip and tie that in on my side. A couple of turns, you want to keep it tight. Tighten that and stretch it over to the far side. bind it in place and then again now take these two strands just take them hold them flat against the side of the fly and trim that off so that it's level with the uh, back of the rabbit strip as well so I'm just going to hold all that flat and just tie back on that'll make sure it keeps all of these materials flat into the side of our of our fly and it's time to put on the front part of the fly. So you could use marabou for that. Uh, you could use rabbit fur for that. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap one of these little chickaboo type grizzle olive feathers here. I'm just going to find the tip of the feather, nip it out pull forward a few fibers because what we want to do is just to tie in on the very last bit of uh, stock that remains at the tip there fold it back and a couple of turns across it and then we are going to wrap this hackle so hackle pliers on fold it between finger and thumb as we go Maybe my fingers are getting in the road, or are you seeing what's happening? But what I'm doing is pinching across it and sliding through it. And then we want to tie this off I say this is still wobbly. The reason for that will become apparent. Scissors in, slide down the stock, trim that off. A 
few wraps just to secure that and then I'm going to I, I do not use whip finish tools so if you like whip finish tools use them I'm going to put a, my version of a whip finish in there and then what I like to do with that is to get a little bit of super glue gel then it won't run all over the place get that onto the needle and set that just in there onto those wraps that we made so we're going to use the cone sliding the cone back just to secure all that in place and the type of cone that you use depends the, on the recess that it'll have and you can choose to have that slot up or the slot down as the fly is intended to fish uh, like this I probably leave the slot uh, to the bottom of it what we're going to do is I'm just turning the fly upside down and I'm going to take my olive green thread this one happens to be a Danville 6 -0, and I'm just going to start to wrap there I'm holding the thread back that'll sort of keep it tight up against the eye of the uh, cone and as you can see this is just creating like a thread dam and pushing the cone back so when it has done its job and we've sort of got it to the point where it's accentuating and are continuing the comb uh, we can then choose to finish now you could use super glue uh, but what I'm going to use is UV cure gel here so we'll take our bodkin or whatever you want to call it, needle, double needle and coat the front of that and then take our UV torch and just set the UV here and then we can cut off the thread, fly is finished what I'm going to do is just to take another coat of the UV here now that that is cut go all over it set that with the UV torch so that is our fly tied as I said it's meant to fish this way up so and because it is a jig sort of setup it means that you shouldn't snag the bottom given that we're using a tungsten cone here this thing can go to the bottom and uh, you can fish fairly deep water with it so Hopefully you like what you've seen. If you did, give us a like, subscribe, uh, tell all your friends, check out all the other videos that we have on the channel, and uh, until next time, tight lines, and thanks for watching.